And sir, we are now connected with uh, clinical nutritionist Nindita Priscilia. Good afternoon, Nindita. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank Hi. you so much for being with us. Could you please answer my question? Is it true that yes. fasting is a good way of uh, detoxifying uh, of toxins from our body? Okay, so uh, actually with or without fasting, our body is still going through a physiological process to detoxify our body. So, uh, but more and more evidence have suggested that Ramadan fasting for a full month every year can combine with compute consuming a um, healthy dietary pattern as well as engaging in uh, appropriate physical activity can uh, improve the processes of the body's natural metabolism and finally improve blood and body fluids uh, cleansing. So that's why uh, many narration around fasting is sometimes is uh, correlated to detoxification. But uh, as you have mentioned previously that Every day, the human body is contaminated with toxins, either from food, drinks, air pollution. So the more air pollution in the, in the environment and the more toxins we get from food and drinks, the greater the chance that our body will be accumulated with toxins. That's why we have certain mechanism in our body to minimize the risk of development of non-communicable diseases. And one of them is through Ramadan fasting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. When we're talking about fasting, we often hear that it is good to break uh, your fast with something sweet. So, can we detox our body with sweets? Okay, so um, basically, we're not detoxifying our body with sweet foods. So, detoxification is a physiological process, again, that will occur <laughs> with or without eating certain foods. So, the liver in our body uh, is the main um, organ to help us to filtrate uh, anything uh, intoxicating for our body. So it converts toxin into waste products, cleansing our blood, store glycogen as well, and also metabolize our nutrients. And um, what we also often heard is that in recent years, many campaigns or products are marketed to detox and cleanse your liver. liver. Um, many myths also regarding liver cleanses with certain ingredients have been uh, marketed to boost up the selling of certain products. So sometimes um, when we heard uh, those kind of uh, notion, uh, we can um, see from the evidence that there have, uh, there have not been adequate clinical trial data to uh, recommend the routine use of um, consuming natural compounds from detoxification juices or uh, things, uh, natural compounds, etc., etc., for prevention um, and to improve our detoxification. So, uh, as for uh, breaking your fast with sweet foods, I would recommend that as well. But in terms of to improve uh, or to boost up your blood glucose level, because throughout the period of fasting, you are um, our uh, blood glucose are decreasing so mm -hmm. therefore we need to consume natural sugar from let's say fruits or dates to uh, uh, increase and boost up this um, mm -hmm. low uh, blood glucose level level that's mm -hmm. why we, we need to also make sure that what we consume is not artificial and not uh, sweetened beverages from uh, artificial sources of sugar. Oh, interesting. What about um, having juices or smoothies to iftar break the fast? Is that allowed? I mean, you mentioned as long as it's not artificial sugars, right? Yes. So fruit juices are great actually to consume for breakfasting. So because it contains natural sugars, it also contains great source of micronutrients, vitamins, minerals from fruits. But however, uh, you need to ensure to limit and refrain yourself from using refined and art artificial sugar in your food or drinks. Uh, and you don't necessarily need to buy overpriced cold pressed juice mm -hmm. uh, because you can simply eat your fruits as it is to preserve the fiber from the fruits. And also, you can also blend it uh, and make it in form of juice. But then, uh, regardless, uh, eating juices or natural sources of uh, sugar, such as from fruits, can uh, increase our blood glucose levels as well. But then, 
as um, as much as possible. It also um, improve our storage of micronutrients after after losing it throughout the day, and also uh, we need to make sure that our juice is also not added with artificial sugar. Mm. So as much as possible, just use the natural sugar from the fruits. All right. Uh, earlier we talked about how our, how our body can absorb toxins through food, right? Through certain foods. And you already mentioned earlier as well that uh, one of the food that we need to uh, avoid is uh, the ones with artificial uh, sugar or flavorings. Now, are there any other food or type of food that we should avoid during uh, the detoxifying process? And what food should we eat then? What's, okay. what's the best so, one that yeah. we can eat? Okay, so uh, there's not uh, one food that is super super food, mm -hmm. and there's no food that uh, that can cause you or break your health suddenly. Okay. So I would use the to I would likely to use the term of um, achieving healthy eating rather than to detoxify our body because uh, Ramadan fasting produces benefits beyond uh, detoxification. Mm -hmm. It improves your body metabolism and then your biochemistry level in your body, uh, electrolytes, and many more. So um, I believe that uh, consuming a uh, balanced diet, uh, dietary patterns are the best one because it is recomm recommended by the international expert consensus, uh, which is one of them is WHO, that if we want to achieve healthy fasting, we can also uh, ensure that we are meeting the nutritional, daily nutritional requirements, mm -hmm. like we are not fasting. So mm -hmm. uh, the recommendation is to eat a well-balanced diet, which contains um, healthy carbohydrates, like complex carbohydrates that um, high in fiber, and also a source of animal-based protein, uh, plant-based plant based protein and then vitamins and minerals from fruit and vegetables and also um, healthy fats. Mm -hmm. So we can divide it into one plate, like making sure that in a plate that we consume um, consists of half of our plate is uh, fruit and vegetables and that a quarter of it contains uh, proteins and also the rest of quarter of it uh, contains of healthy carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, by making sure that uh, we consume raw to minimally processed food, it is more preferred rather than consuming highly processed food because it increases the inflammation in our body. And also um, making sure that uh, to hydrate yourself because there's a tendency for people who pass throughout the day for more than up to 13 or 14 hours uh, is dehydrated. So still um, spread your um, fluid consumption uh, throughout iftar, sahur, but then still ensure at least you uh, consume two and a half liters per day. I think, uh, interesting. I think so, that covers it all. Yeah, and you also mentioned earlier that there is no such a uh, superfood. Uh, how about traditional food? Are there any trad traditional food or beverage that are good for iftar? Okay, so traditional, I would... Um, Maybe the terms would be um, locally based food or traditional food. Uh, sometimes we use that for, uh, for uh, like in Indonesia, we use uh, sometimes people are breaking their fast with jamu mm -hmm. or uh, uh, some with natural compounds. But then uh, common ingredients used for um, like detoxification uh, still not have uh, adequate uh, clinical trial data to prove that. Uh, it is recommended for routine use, but so uh, what I suggest is to uh, like combine all these sources of food. The more color on your plate, the better. Mm -hmm. So traditional food uh, that you can consume during uh, for your breakfast is basically anything that you can find available, accessible in your um, area, and um, it would be affordable because you don't need to. Uh, order something imported and then it is also uh, good to promote uh, food sustainability as well because you use locally based food. So uh, when we talk about uh, breaking fast, still we need to ensure any kind of sources of foods that contains natural sugar, but also maybe breaking our fast with two or three dates 
that we can find uh, in your country, that you can find in your country. And then after that, just drink um, one or two glasses of uh, mineral water. And then you can uh, continue with your praying. And after that, you can um, proceed with eating a balanced diet uh, in a plate. Because again, we need to make sure that we meet the requirement, nutritional requirement in a day, even though we only have a very limited uh, window of eating. Mm. So, um, and Anita, I have a question. So, a lot of people try to aim uh, and use this fasting momentum for weight loss. Is it actually effective yeah. to lose weight in 30 days with minimum time to exercise, perhaps, you say? Okay, so uh, there's this evidence of a systematic review and meta-analysis um, publications that shows uh, start a list of uh, Ramadan fasting uh, intervention on uh, different populations. So it has been showing different um, results, but then uh, it is more uh, concluded to uh, despite being accompanied with hydration, uh, people who fast during Ramadan is proven uh, effective in decreasing their body weight, relatively uh, fat mass, uh, and also have relative fat mass. But but then uh, Ramadan fasting seem to implicate some beneficial adaptation as well in weight management. Mm. So um, it has shown effectiveness, but not um, but body uh, weight is. Um, can experience fluctuation and it really depends on how uh, how you eat during sahur and iftar mm. so when you bloat yourself <laughs> with lots of carbohydrates but yeah. very low nutrient density it may uh, it may not uh, improve your uh, ramadan uh, physiological condition overall uh, at the end of the day so yeah we we can you, we need to go back again with what we consume during this window of eating right um, I know earlier you've mentioned several points or several benefits of uh, fasting, but could you please give us uh, a little recap on the benefits of fasting during the holy month of Ramadan for our bodies? Okay, so um, again, uh, the benefits of fasting, not only uh, we can see it not only from the detoxification process, but then also evidence suggested that fasting can also have positive effects in strengthening the digestive system and improving the gut microbiota uh, because uh, our body is given some time to really um, in the fasting state, not in feasting state. Mm -hmm. And all this uh, mechanism have adjusted, uh, can uh, be uh, Evidence has suggested that it is improving our blood glucose level or uh, for people who suffer from hypertension, the blood pressure can also be maintained and also lower the cholesterol level. And also, also fasting during Ramadan also lowers inflammation in our body, um, <clears throat> oxidative stress markers from free radicals. And also, um, it also improved our um, mechanism or management in weight. So um, for the rest of digestive tract also has been shown uh, some improvement and also after uh, apart from physiological benefits we also found many psychological uh, benefit as well that during the fasting of Ramadan because there are, so, there are lots of involvement of uh, religious rituals and uh, worship, worships it also found that fasting during holy month of Ramadan can lower stress, anxiety, depression in many uh, mild cases of uh, mental illness so it has been showing not only um, detoxifying uh, benefits but also uh, physiological metabolical and also uh, uh, psychological benefits so uh, for those who are uh, observing ho the holy month of ramadan i think it's very best uh, of you to combine this uh, dietary pattern during the window of eating and also ensuring that you're still engaging with at least mild to moderate uh, physical activity daily uh, to ensure that the detoxification from your um, sweat uh, to excrete uh, all those uh, toxins are still uh, promoted well.
Wow, amazing. So we will enjoy those benefits if we maintain a balanced diet through the window of eating, mm -hmm. uh, do a little yeah. exercise, and make sure that our sleep quality is good, right? Yes. Well, thank Sweet you so much, well. uh, Nimbita, for the amazing insights today. We learned so much, definitely. Thank you for being with thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, Bye. Certainly. Bye. Bye. What an interesting discussion. Interesting. I love it. I mean, the hardest part is to control yourself during the windows of eating, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it is, yes, right? Yes, it is. I mean, uh, if you want to maximize and optimize the detoxification process or if you want it for weight loss, it means you have to really be strict with what you're consuming during that window of opportunity of eating. Yes. And make, making sure that you exercise enough because yes. the muscle burns the fat, right? Yeah. And no exercise equals burning the muscle as well because then the muscle mass actually decreases. <laughs> yeah. we, we can talk about this on and on, but Woo! we will go for a little break and we will return with a fun game. So do not go anywhere. Stay with us on the three-hour news show and see you today.